everybody. Happy Saturday night. I'm Beth Kingston. Welcome to the fourth installment of Let's Craft with the Kingston Home. It's sort of like a girls night, craft party, bonanza, way to get together. I'm super excited that you're here. Um, if you've been joining me from our first installment, I would love to hear that. If you're new tonight, I would love to hear that too. Um, say hi, tell me where you're tuning in from, tell me how your week was, what you're drinking, vodka tonic, again for me as usual. Um, we're gonna make something cool tonight. I've never done this before. We're making, um, this is the CIY Custom Candle Keepsake Craft Kit. Say that 10 times fast. Um, if you weren't able to buy all the kits together, I will link to this in the comments so that you know which kit we're talking about. If you got this, I'm really excited to do this with you. If you didn't, I hope you'll, you'll still tune in and watch along with us. Um, I'm excited about this kit for a lot of reasons. You guys know I've been talking about how much I love these kits and why. Let me show you what you're gonna get and then we'll talk about it as we go through. So I've done candle art with real candles and tissue paper. I've never done it with these faux candles and tracing paper. So this was really cool. So you get the faux candle, you get a giant bottle of the paint glaze, the Crayola paint glaze, you get a paintbrush, you get two sheets of, um, Images, you get two sheets of tracing paper, you get a whole set of these really cool Crayola take note permanent markers that are awesome. Um, and so all you need that you don't get is just like a paper plate or a paper cup, you need a pair of scissors, and then you're gonna need three AAA batteries for your candle to make it light up. Okay, bring it on in. Don Kingston's behind the camera again tonight, hi babe. So everybody's is gonna look different based on what you want it to look like. If you want to do a holiday theme, if you want to do a phrase, I decided to do a phrase. And what I did is I started most of it. Um, I did most of it already because I don't think you guys want to sit here and watch me <laughs> color and draw. But this is what's really great about these. And I'm going to use the icon uh, sheet in just a bit. What's cool about this is, you know, you guys have heard me talk about the fact that I have terrible handwriting. So this allows you to pretend and practice handwriting, but still have a really cool project. The other great thing about this is these are lined up pretty straight on the paper. So when I was drawing my letters, you don't have to try to perfectly line up everything. You can sort of just use the edge of the paper right here. And as long as that looks like it's pretty lined up, you're gonna be good to go. So the phrase I'm doing is love lives here. I've already done love and lives. The other tip that I have is figure out what you wanna say, maybe write it down on a scratch piece of paper, and then start in the middle. <laughs> so I started with the V, worked my way out, then did love above, and now I'm doing here below. And it's just this easy. You decide where you want it to go. I'm gonna line up my edge. Here is another thing. Um, for those of you who are crafters, especially if you have like die cutting machines, you probably understand what welded letters mean. Um, that means letters like this that are handwritten, quote unquote cursive. Sometimes they touch, generally they touch. These don't have, I mean, this is your project. You can do whatever you want also. Hold on, let me put on my readers because I'm turning into an old lady. Um, so you can have your letters touch if you want to. They don't have to, and some of them might actually look better not touching or welded, as we like to say. So I have some that are touching and some that are not. And all you do is take the tip of your marker and trace around and then just fill it in. It's so fun, like this is actually incredibly relaxing. I had a little bit of, um, I was not dreading it, but I had a little bit of anxiety about it because I wanted to make a good project for you guys and my handwriting is just so terrible, but I love this sheet. And the other cool thing is, you know how I love to talk about sort of stepping outside of the box and what the original project is, you can find anything you want online and print it out and use this tracing paper. So like if you had a team logo or um, you wanted to do somebody's name and you just wanted to go ahead and print it out and do it that way, you totally could. I mean, it's just super, super easy. So that was just an example of how you do the letters. I wanna show you how you do the icons. You can see I've already been having all kinds of fun over here on my craft table today. So. Tell me how your week has been, everybody. Tell me what you guys have had going on. Summer is almost at a close, which I cannot believe. Um, I'm ready for fall, though. I'm ready for the, the leaves and the apple cider and the pumpkins and all that kind of good stuff. So 
The cool thing about these icons is you can trace them and color them in if you want to. You could just do the shapes. I um, want to use these hearts, but I want to use the small one on one end and the big one on another. So that I, it's just super easy. Again, I just sort of eyeball it, make sure that it's straight. And I could like trace the outline in black and fill it in if I wanted to. I just want to do the heart. You guys know this is a challenge. I'm talking and coloring at the same time. Um, so here's, while I'm, while I'm coloring this in, I want to talk about why I'm enjoying these kits so much. You've heard me say, okay, so I did that one down there. I'm just going to move this one down. And I'm just going to eyeball this. Oh, and I'm going to draw it right there. Um, I'm going to eyeball that edge of the heart so I can draw a bigger one. But um, like this kit is a perfect example. You've heard me talk about how, you know, I don't want to invest in $100 worth of, say, macrame supplies. That's what we're doing next week. But I've always wanted to try it. So you get these kits and you get to try all these projects. But the cool thing, there, see how that, I'm just going around like that. The cool thing about these Crayola kits is, okay, so I've got the supplies to make one candle. But the markers I'll use forever. The paintbrush I can use over and over and over again for a bajillion different projects. Same with the paint glaze. Like, you get products to do one specific project, but the stuff that's left over is stuff that you will use or give to your kids or you know, take to church and leave for Sunday school. But um, that's what I love about this is this is not just a one and done. The candle itself is, but these, the markers and the paint and stuff you can use over and over and over. Okay, so that's my finished product. What you can do if you're taking a look at it, and remember, we're going to glaze over this, but if you're looking at it and you feel like, oh, you know what, I didn't get a little bit of color in there, like I see one spot right here, you can just take your marker and go over it once you've gotten away from the alphabets. Just fill in any blank spots you see. Okay, here's my tip for everybody. Um, you know I always love to talk about my craft fails. <laughs> so when I did my first um, candle, I had Grandmaster plans. Um, I had done this and I was like, oh, I'm gonna do another one and wrap it all the way around. Here's a tip. This paper, um, this tracing paper, is about a half an inch too tall, and it doesn't go all the way around. So if you decide you want to do a wraparound, I was looking at like a green plaid, I thought that would be cool for Christmas, you're going to need to use both sheets of paper. Or, like I could cut this sheet and use that on the back, but just sort of be mindful of that as you're working, because I don't want you to spend a lot of time drawing and then be like, oh shoot, that's not going to work. So I'm going to set this aside. You do want to cut this down. So if you're not doing some sort of all over pattern, you want to cut this down and you could get out, we've talked before about trimmers. Um, if you're a crafter, you might have a trimmer, but otherwise you can just take regular scissors. And you do want to be careful that you don't smudge this, but just for, you know, a minute or two. I'm going to cut this. And then top to bottom, I actually am just going to cut off that extra half inch like I mentioned because having the straight edge at the top and bottom is actually going to help me put it where I want it. I'm just going to give a little bit of a cut and then I can lay it down and see. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, great. So. I want to know what you guys are thinking looking at these icons. For those of you that got the kit, what do you think you're going to do? Are you going to do something custom? Are you going to do a name? These are really fun. This is a really fun idea. Um, okay, we've got the paint glaze. You're not going to need a ton unless, as I mentioned before, you are covering the whole candle. So I'm just going to squirt. I mean, it doesn't even, barely has to fill the bottom of the cup. Um, and then we'll take our paintbrush. And if you're going to decide, there's no, as far as I could see on mine, there's no ridge that you need to cover. There's no back of the candle. So you can just start sort of wherever you want. So what you're going to do, take your paintbrush and you're just going to put some on. You want to do some nice smooth strokes. And then you're going to take your image and lay it down. Now this does dry quickly. I'm actually going to stand up 
so I can see. This starts to dry pretty quickly, so you wanna get it down and get it straight. And then what you're gonna do is just go underneath. I'll do it this way so you guys can see. Go underneath and lay it down. So when you're doing this, it is going to more than likely wrinkle a little bit. It is what it is, my friends. That's the beauty of trying craft, craft ideas. And also don't worry about this lip right away because we're gonna go paint over the top as well or glaze over the top. So you can um, do smooth lines to sort of decrease the wrinkling, but you know, when stuff gets wet, it's gonna wrinkle a little bit. Don't worry about that too much. Don't worry if it goes, um, it, see how this extends out over where, where I did the glazing? That's okay. So just be gentle, but quick. Gentle and smooth, but quick. And you might get a little on yourself. There we go. Okay, wipe that off of my paper. And then, see how you can see it's wrinkling up just a smidge? That's okay, that's just the nature of the project. Then I'm just gonna start glazing over it. And here's where you might really start to see some wrinkling. But you know what, it's gonna be okay. When I show you the finished project, you'll see what I mean. Unless you're gonna spend 700 hours working on this. I actually, I was not thrilled with the wrinkling when I did the first one, but once it dried, I actually think it's really cool. It looks sort of antiqued. So you're just gonna keep. And you can see now that the marker is not smudging, even with this glaze going over. So you did, I just did need to give it like a minute or two. And you can tap down the edges, glaze over that. Okay. And you just wanna keep doing it until you get all the flat edges. You can sort of get underneath there if you want. And then once you've got it the way you want it, and like I said, it does start to dry quick, you're going to set this aside. And like right here, if I have an overlap of the lip a, bit of, a, li uh, lip a little bit, I can go ahead and use a pair of scissors, but I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry. It says to do, to let it dry overnight, but I let this dry maybe a couple hours, and you can see that the wrinkles are still there a little bit, they're substantially less, and I actually think it looks kinda cool. Um, <laughs> I see dog hair in here too. But uh, this is what the end result is gonna look like. If you want to cut it a little bigger so you don't have the seam up front, you can do that, but, We've got our little, oh, there we go. I mean, I think that looks really cool. I dig it. This is a great project um, for your kids. I'll take my glasses off now. This would be a great project to do with the kids. I mean, you can get these candles practically everywhere and you can get great deals on them like in bundles. I mean, like I said, once you've got these, you can print whatever you want to off of the internet and trace your own. And as I mentioned, because of this kit, now you have all the markers you need. Now you have this, I mean, we didn't even use one tenth, one twentieth of this bottle. Think of the number of candles you could do with this. It's such a cool look. It's so easy to do. This was a, this was a quick one. Um, I feel like we didn't get to chat as much this week. That's okay. Macrame, we'll have a long time. Next week we're doing macrame. That'll be our fifth installment. So not too many more weeks with you guys, but I have really enjoyed this. And remember, I wanna see what your projects are looking like. Um, hashtag Crayola Crafts. You can tag Crayola, you can tag me. I'm the Kingston Home on Instagram and Facebook. Um, if you wanna see even more cool ideas, it's crayola.com slash crafts. And again, if this is one of the kits you wanna grab, I'll put the link in the comments. I appreciate you guys so much. Take good care and I'll see you next Saturday. Bye-bye.